Hey, this is a key shot Bob. I am Blender Bob's cousin, far distance cousin, and I live in French Polynesia. This is the most beautiful island in the world. So I want to talk to you about the software that is not a Blender. The software that I want to talk to, this is so difficult to say. The software that I want to talk to you about is called a key shot. And you know what? I cannot do this. I mean, you give me these broken sunglasses, the stupid hat I'm standing on a beer box. This is not what I signed up for. I want to talk to my agent. Where's my agent? I want to talk to my agent. And cut. <sighs> hey, Blender Bob here. We are going to talk about Keyshot for about a minute because it's related to what we were talking about last week about converting uh, CAD data into polygons. And this is a really interesting software, so I wanted to share it with you. And then we will continue with our tips and tricks for advanced uh, hard surface modeling. This is a very cool software called Keyshot. It's intended to be used as a presentation software for mechanical parts. It can read pretty much every file format you can imagine. It reads SolidWorks stuff directly in the software. It has a huge library of shaders that you can use and they all look very, very good. You just drag and drop everything. It's really simple to use. You can make your own shaders. You can add bump maps, textures. You can do pretty much anything you want. You can even add bevels at rendering time like I've shown you last week in Blender. You can export the geometry into Blender if you want to. The default settings will give you like an insanely heavy geometry, but you can adjust it before you export it. For organic parts, I got better results than MOI because everything was merged into one surface as opposed to MOI who gave me separate parts. You can also easily set up turntables. There are tons of stuff you can do with this software. Okay, now let's go back to Blender because I feel like I'm a trader. This is the part we're going to work on, and as you can see, it's weirdly oriented in space. We don't want to work like this, it's going to be too complicated. So this is how we're going to fix this. First, we're going to select a polygon that is oriented with the axis. So let's try this one. We will then go into Select and do a Select Similar Coplanar. If you press on F, it's going to eliminate all the polygons inside and just give you only two big polygons here. Now we're going to select one of them and we're going to poke it. Now we set the origin in the center at this point here. We're going to select one of these polygons and we're going to orient the camera so it faces this polygon. You do this by going to view and then you go into align view, align view to active, top. Now you see your camera is perfectly facing this polygon. We're going to add an empty here, but there's something important we need to do is that we need to orient it with the view. So here instead of world, we put it to view. It's going to be easier to see if I scale it up a little bit. So as you can see, the locator is aligned with the polygon we selected. Okay, let's duplicate these two objects and we're going to put them in a collection that I called backup. And this is only as a reference when at the end we put the objects back at the original place. We want to make sure that it will be perfectly aligned where it's supposed to be. We can make the collection invisible now. Next step, we're going to take our object and we're going to parent it to the empty. If we set the translations and rotations of the empty to zero, you will see that the object will be placed in the center of the world and it will be aligned with the axis as we want it. The only thing left to do is to orient it in the Z axis to make it aligned with the X just right here like that. All right, now that's good. We are good to start our cleaning. Like I've shown you before in the previous clips, the first thing we want to do is to convert the triangles into quads and then we merge all the polygons that are aligned on a flat surface. If pressing F doesn't work to merge all the faces together, then you have to do it parts by parts and then try to get as few pieces as possible. From the top view, we can see that the polygons are not aligned with the axis, so we're gonna fix that. We're just gonna do a little bit of rotations to make sure that everything is fine. Looks like we need a little cleanup here. Delete edges, delete edges. At this point, I like to do a first pass of connecting the dots just to see if everything looks okay. And if it's not, then I'm gonna fix it later. At this point, I can already tell that it's not gonna work. And that's because the subdivision of the outer ring is not the same as the one for the circle inside. But let's keep going and see how far I can go with this. This is an advanced modeling tutorial, so I'm not showing you every single step I'm doing. But if you are a beginner, you can always take a look at my introduction to modeling uh, 1A to E, follow the link right here. 
Obviously, we don't want these long stretchy polygons, so we're going to fix this. We try to stay as perpendicular to the circle as we can. So let's fix it. The idea here is not to try to get everything right on the first try. You just cut stuff, you connect stuff, you try again and until you get the result you want. So I just keep going and cutting and cutting and cutting and eventually I will get what I want. Now in this case I'm just going to work on one half and we're going to copy it later with a modifier. When I rebuild a surface I always try to keep as many of the original points as possible but in this case I will need to remove them because I have too many edges on the external circle. So I need to get rid of this one and I need to get rid of this one here. To make them at equal distance I'm going to use the space option from loop tools. You can do multiple edges at the same time. Okay this is done I'm happy with it now we're going to go in the back and do pretty much the same thing. Okay slightly different technique here because if I delete this edge I get a very long stretch here it doesn't look good and it modifies the geometry too much so I need to do it another way. So let's connect these two points here and I'm going to collapse this edge completely so just merge it at the center. This way I get a better curve here it's much better here. Now again like I did before I'm going to use the space tool from loop tools and I'm going to space them equally. Good that's much better. Here we have a problem we got an end gun here and also on the side here I would have liked to have an extra edge here so that all these can be at the same distance as all the other ones around because I want something clean and uniform. So maybe what I could do is try to cut from this point and to the sides so let's try it. Cut here, here and here. Now I can equally spread the edges on top and at the bottom. Let's see what it looks like. Okay this is much better it's getting cleaner everything is a quad but this corner I don't like it at all but you know what I will fix it later because I know I'm going to subdivide it more and more so let's check it out later. Okay let's use the mirror modifier to get a perfect copy on the other side. When I do this I get a problem because there are rotations on the original objects and the mirror the axes are not aligned and I get all this problem. So what can you do to fix it and this is parented also it has a rotation on it. You know there's a lot of issues the easiest way to do this is just don't bother just create a plane and just use it as a mirror object. Because you don't want to mess with the transformations otherwise it's going to screw everything up when we want to put the geometry back where it's supposed to go. So you create a plane you just use it as a mirror object and that's it it's that simple. Oh I can see some points are not perfectly aligned uh, with the axis so I'm going to fix that very fast. Fast enough for you huh? I dare you to do better. Okay let's clean up the centers here with a little inset. Now I can delete the inside and just do a grid fill let's give it a shot. Okay grid fill is not really good in this case so we're gonna do it manually. I will just poke the center and delete one out of every two edges so I can get quads. And same thing in the back. Good enough for now, now let's take a look at the bottom. Mwah. What are we gonna do? Okay let's try to connect the dots and see what we're gonna end up with. Yeah I don't think this is gonna work because here we're gonna have troubles if we want to keep cutting because we're gonna get triangles and we don't want triangles. So let's go to plan B. This time I'm gonna cut it in a way to make sure that I will have quads everywhere. It's not gonna be the most beautiful geometry but we're gonna fix it later. Okay we got all quads of different sizes and they don't look too good but you know let's try something we're gonna insert them and again it's getting better now we're gonna try to smooth these polygons so we're gonna select these faces we're gonna go into the sculpt mode and we're going to create a face set from the edit mode selection. In your brush make sure you turn on face set and face set boundary now you can use the smooth tool and try to smooth everything. Yeah it's, it's looking better but it's still not perfect because I don't like these weird polygons in the center. Eh not looking that good. Okay can we make this better? Of course we can. Okay we're gonna delete the edges we don't like and we're gonna reconnect the dots in a different way. So let's get rid of these and now we connect from one side to another. So this one, this one and we keep going. Look at me going. I am like a human sewing machine. Tack attack 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 attack. Okay let's repeat the smooth thing we did before and let's see what kind of result we're gonna get. So everything is already set up we just need to paint it and yeah 
That's good. All quads. That's much better than what we had before. All right, let's go back on the top. You know, at this point, I'd like to try a bevel modifier and a subdivision one just to see what it's going to look like. So let's give it a shot. Okay, bevel looks okay. Now what if we try to add the subdivision modifier and oh, I can already see some problems here. We have an end gun here. I couldn't see it before, but now I do. So let's fix it. Haha, <laughs> two little points here. Let's merge them together at the center. That's it. Probably another one on the other side. Yeah, I can see it already. So same thing on the other side. I'm still not happy with the way it looks on top and I said I would fix it later. Well, now it's later, so let's fix it. I will try by inserting an edge here in the center. I do it manually because if I use the loop tool, I'm going to get this weird result. It's going to look like crap, you see. I don't want this, so I'm going to do it manually. I'm just going to select all the edges here. And what you can do is press uh, shift, no, shift, control W, shift W, one of them. Ah, damn it, what is it? It's shift W. Actually, I knew that. I just wanted to spend time, you know, or fill up the time while I do this. So, <clears throat> Okay, at this point we're just gonna mess around to try to figure out how we can clean it. So I don't like corners like this here, it's really bad. So, uh, you know, let's try to cut the geometry, see if we can resolve the issue. And of course I wanna do it on both sides. Well, okay, I could use the mirror modifier, but no, I'm just gonna do it by hand because it's not that hard. Okay, two little edges to delete. It's still messy on top. I mean, I got this problem here. I got this end gun here and I got another corner here. I hate these corners. I need to fix that. So let's try to add, you know, complete the circle here and add another edge here. I'm going to do the same thing with shift W and we're going to connect more edges together. So this one, this one, and this one, this one. Okay, now we got triangles. So we could remove them by just collapsing this edge here. So merge at the center, same thing on the other side. Okay, I got rid of this problem. Now I got mm, more star points. I don't like this. What if I try to collapse this one and this one? Okay, now we got quads everywhere. We go. We don't have any weird corners. Maybe we just need to smooth it. But before I do this, I want to make sure here that the edges will be at equal distance. So space, same thing on the other side. And then we can smooth it. So at this point, you know the drill. You just select all the coplanar surfaces. You go into your sculpt mode, and then you create a face set with the selected, uh, the active selection, whatever it's called. Set face from active edit, whatever, you know. Just read it, you'll see it. And we just smooth it out. Oh, we got a little triangle here. Nah, no big deal. Okay, so looks good. Let's go back into edit mode, select that little triangle, and just collapse it in the center. Because we inserted some edges on the sides, we need to fix the back. So we're going to select all these edges and we're just going to do like we did before. We're going to press uh, Shift W, right, Shift W, to separate them in two. And here we go. Now we just need to connect these points. So we press J. It's much faster than using the knife tool. And finally, we just smooth everything again. And we just smooth, 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 uh, smooth. This is this is so hard to pronounce for a French guy. Ugh. Okay, that looks good. There's nothing funky about it. Everything looks good. We have these five points here, but that's okay. We can live with it. It's no big deal. Let's turn our modifiers back on. Not bad at all. Looks good. There's something funky going on in the corners here, but I think I know what it is. First, I'm going to try to put the subdivision a little bit higher. And if it's still there, then I will know that the problem comes from somewhere else and I know where it comes from. It has custom normals. So if I remove them, I get a perfectly clean model and we are almost done. Now we need to put it back where it used to be using a constraint. But before that, we need to remove this rotation 100 degrees we did before to align it with the x-axis. Now that it's done, we're going to select our empty and we're going to add a transform constraint and we're going to tell it to use as a target the previous empty that we did before and now you see it just snapped right where it used to be and the only thing left to do is to unparent our original object and get rid of everything else that we don't need in the scene and now we are done give me a b give me an l give me an e give me an n give me a d this is stupid give me an e. to do that give me an r 